Now, Mystery Theater. Brought to you in part by True Value Hardware, your store of first choice. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I'm so glad you're here. You, in person, in the flesh, bone, blood, and tissue. It's all very cozy, very comforting to think of you listening at your ease to the weird little tale we're about to bring you. But where is the rest of you? The other part of you? Where is your astral body? Hmm? You didn't know you had one? What is an astral body? Well, according to the largest dictionary we could find, it is a subtle counterpart of the physical body, accompanying, but not usually, separated from it. Now, the key word here is usually, for some swear that the astral body can and on occasion does separate itself from the physical body and go wandering off on its own. Mother? Yes, dear? Is he with you now? He just left. But he was there. Yes. Mother, what you saw was Adam's astral body. Are you telling me I saw a ghost? It's happened again. You saw Adam, Mother. But it wasn't Adam in the flesh. Not the flesh that was lying beside me in our bed. A very different kind of flesh. Maybe not flesh at all. Our mystery drama, Adam's Astral Self, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Michael Wager and Jennifer Harmon. This is the story of an actor named Adam Farr. An actor is someone whose whole effort is to become someone else, all the while remaining out of necessity himself. The character he portrays or becomes is therefore a sort of second self living for the moment within the actor's body. Any actor can pretend. Only a very great actor can become. The second self of a great actor has a power and a pliancy that is often quite incomprehensible. And Adam Farr was a very great actor. We bring you now an account of the many strange things that happened to him or that he made happen to himself and to others. Ooh, Adam. Ooh, Adam, it's cold. We need another blanket. Would you get up and get one? I, I can't get to sleep. Adam? Adam, I'm freezing. Please get a... Adam? Adam, don't pretend with me. Please, Adam. Oh, Adam. Oh, oh dear. Tessa, Mother. Mother, I can't wake him up. Adam? Of course, Adam. What do you mean you can't wake him up? What I said. He isn't sick, is he? I don't think so. He looked all right when he was here. What's that? What did you say? I said he seemed all right when he was here. He was at your house? He stopped by for a minute. When was this? A little while ago. Matter of fact, he just left when you called. Mother, I'm coming over. I need to talk to you. It's kind of late. I'm getting dressed and taking the car. I'll be there in a half an hour. Adam? Adam? Oh, it happened again. Just a second, Tessa. Come in, darling. Sorry, 
to disturb you, Mother. It's all right. Give me your coat. I'll hang it up. Is it snowing? No, but it's about to. Come sit down. I've got a fire going. Now, what's got you so upset? When was Adam here, Mother? I told you on the phone about an hour ago. He was only here for a minute or two. I was at the piano practicing some Chopin etudes. I looked up and there he was. I must say I was surprised to see him so late at night and such a bad night at that. But he smiled at me and motioned me to go on playing. And I did, and then we exchanged a few words. What did Adam say? (laughs) Heavens, I don't remember. Tessa, what is it? What's the matter? It may interest you to know that Adam was in bed with me in our bedroom, in our house, the entire time. Since right after dinner, lying right beside me. You must have got up after you went to sleep. I didn't go to sleep. We had a late dinner, then I I cued him in his lines for the new play, and and then we went to bed. A little later, I I felt cold. I couldn't get to sleep. It was so cold. And I I asked him to get up and get an extra blanket to put over us. I couldn't rouse him, and that's when I called you. He was here. I saw him. What you saw, Mother, was Adam's astral body. Are you telling me I saw a ghost? You saw Adam, Mother, but it wasn't Adam in the flesh. Not the flesh that was lying beside me in our bed. A very different kind of flesh. Maybe not flesh at all. Anyway, that's how Adam explains it. Explains what? It's not the first time it's happened. Remember when he was doing that play about Napoleon? He went to Corsica to see where Napoleon was born. I don't remember Adam going to Corsica. He didn't go to Corsica. He was rehearsing the play. He projected himself to Corsica. Astrally. You mean he imagined himself in Corsica? He went to Corsica. How could he if he was here? By an act of his unconscious will. Well, that's what he says anyway. Tessa, dear, Adam is an actor. A very great actor. He did a lot of research on Napoleon before he did that play. Maybe he imagined. Oh, that's what I thought when he told me that he'd been there. But but after the play opened, I I talked to one of the actors, a a bit player, who was born in Corsica. His mother still lives there, and he said his mother had seen Adam in Corsica, crossing a little footbridge. She recognized him from all the films he'd made, and, and she asked if she might take his picture. You're not saying... I'm saying she did take his picture and sent it to her son and he showed it to me. A picture of Adam standing on a little footbridge in Corsica. You recognized him? It really was Adam? It wasn't a very good picture, but it was Adam, all right. I showed it to him and and he said, yes, he he remembered the bridge and and the woman and having his picture taken, he, he said he was there. I said I didn't believe him. The man in the picture must have been his double, and he laughed and said, yes, it was his double, his etheric double. In other words, his astral body, a a spirit body shaped just like his own physical body, the the same size, a body that could detach itself and move about wherever he wanted it to go. I I never told you about this because I didn't want to frighten you, but now I... It doesn't frighten me. It frightens me. I think it would be lovely to have an astral body and go floating about in it. Adam says everyone has an astral body. So I suppose anyone can go floating about in it if they've a mind to. Personally, I... I wonder if I could. Adam says that when people die, you can see the astral body hovering over the earthly one. But that's marvelous. I'm glad you think so. Because I'm leaving him, Mother. I want you to stay with Jonathan until I find a place to live. You want to leave a wonderful man like Adam? Do you know he thinks he can fly? Really? Really fly? By himself? Well, he hasn't quite got the knack of it yet, but he says that because he hasn't learned to concentrate correctly. I used to think I could fly. Mother, will you do it? Come live at your house? Or let Jonathan come live here with you? I think it would be best if I came and stayed at your house. When were you planning to leave? Well, just as soon as I've told Adam. Adam? Adam, wake up. Hmm? Oh, what, what time is it? What are you doing up? I want to talk to you, Adam. Huh? Hey, it's still dark out. I'll turn a light on. 
Got your clothes on. Where have you been? Or are you going someplace? I've been at my mother's house. You went to see Maida? What for? Adam, were you at her house earlier this evening? Yes. I was there for a minute. She was playing a Chopin tube, one I liked. I wanted to hear it more clearly. You knew she was playing Chopin before you went to her house? <gasps> Why else would I go there in the middle of the night? Mother lives 15 miles from here. How could you know that she was playing Chopin at all? I didn't know she was. I I knew there's a difference. Well, if there is, I can't see it. Well, the way a farmer knows. It's going to rain. He doesn't know, but he knows. He couldn't give you evidence, but he knows. Oh, Adam. You can call it precognition if you like. You can call it telepathy. I don't care what you call it. <laughs> Would you believe me that when I asked you for the tenth time to marry me, I knew you'd say yes just before you said it? <laughs> and the other nine times, I knew you'd say no and tell me it wouldn't be fair to your little boy. <laughs> oh, I don't care whether you believe me or not. It's true. It happens all the time. I don't take any credit for it. It's simply true. The way you went to Corsica? I did go. And stayed here at the same time to rehearse the play. How? Do we have to go all over that again? I don't know how I did it. I simply did it. Call it astral projection. That's what the books call it, though I've never read any of them. All I know is that when I'm in a certain state of mind... What state of mind? A kind of relaxed concentration. Something... Well, sometimes there's a sudden click. And then... Click, 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 and then something is released and takes off and goes free, liberated. I... Well, I don't expect you to understand. And this latest notion of yours, that you can fly? Not yet. But soon, men have flown, you know. You've heard of Peter of Alicantara, haven't you? The great Spanish ascetic. He flew over the tops of trees whenever he had a mind to. And Joseph of Cupertino, the flying monk. Everyone's heard of him. 17th century. A capuchin. One day, while he was praying, he floated off the ground and up to the altar. No, stop and it. back again. You can say it was religious ecstasy in his case, but what about Daniel Douglas Home in the 19th century in England? What about Simon Majors at the time of the Emperor? Oh, Adam, stop it. I can't listen to any more. Oh, my poor darling, I... I mustn't expect you to understand. You're so... so sweet, so simple. How could you possibly comprehend the power of the unconscious will... The human psyche, Tessa, was designed to do more than gape at things and give them names. It can control things, not just wait for things to happen. Make them happen. I don't understand. I don't want to understand. There is nothing to understand. Oh, my darling, there is so much to understand. There's so much power within us lying there, crouching there. Holding its breath. Waiting. Adam, you are a great actor. A, a great artist. I'm just a... Oh, being an actor has something to do with it, I suppose. Yes, in my best moments of creativity, I have the sensation of being selfless, timeless. Yes, I feel that. But I don't feel that. On the other hand, it may have to do with my pineal gland, as... There's a little grayish-red thing attached to the third vertebra. They say it looks like the... Like an eye. It actually has a retina and a lens. Imagine. And it's said to be the seat of the soul. Adam, everything you say may be true. Oh, it is. I haven't expressed it very well, but... But it, it's it... way beyond me. I don't have your mind or your talent or your penal eye. I'm... In... Maybe so. I can't comprehend what you say. Oh, it's all right, darling. No, it's not all right because it confuses me and it makes me unhappy. I don't want to make you unhappy, Tessa. I can't live with all this talk of astral bodies and pineal glands. I, I can't understand it and don't, I don't like it. Don't try to understand it. I'm not going to try, Adam. I'm leaving you. That's absurd. Oh, as soon as it's light, I'm going to drive into town and, and take a room in a hotel. Mother will be here in the morning to stay with you and, and to look after John. I'll follow you. I'll follow you and bring you back. It won't do any good. I'm going now, Adam. Tessa. Tessa. Something's ha happening. What is it? What's happening to me? I can't 
Stay on the bed. I has to hold me down. Don't let, don't let me. I'm rising in the air. I'm floating like Simon Majors, like Peter of Cupertino, Tessa. Come back. Hold me down. Adam, no, I I wasn't ready for this. Adam, I'm leaving. Come back. Hold me down, Tessa. Tessa! But Tessa has gone, and Adam continues to rise steadily from his bed. Perhaps it is better to fancify that one can defy gravity, if only one wanted to, than to discover that one is actually doing it when one doesn't much want to. We'll return shortly for Act Two. Adam Farr's wife, Tessa, left his house. And it is a week since her mother, whose name, by the way, is Maida, moved in. Adam, as we know, is endowed not only with a great acting talent, but also with a peripatetic soul, which on previous occasions has seen fit to take flight from his stationary body. How will he fare with only a mother-in-law to keep him anchored down? Mr. Farr's residence. Mother? Tessa, I thought you'd never call. Where are you? Well, that's what I called to tell you, but I, I don't want Adam to know. Well, Adam's upstairs. I hope he hasn't picked up the extension. He never does things like that. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm in a motel about a mile out of town on Route 9. The Valley Motel, Cabin 6. Is it a nice place? Nice enough. There aren't very many people here. It's out of season, but it's okay. How's everything with you? Oh, all right. A little tense, maybe. Adam goes into rehearsal next week, you know. I know. That always makes him tense. But he's managed to stay in his physical body, if that's what you're worried about. Well, I wasn't worried, exactly. I just wanted to be sure you were all right. And Jonathan. How's Jonathan? Jonathan's fine. Has he asked about me? I told him you went on a little trip for your health. Tessa, I'd better hang up. I think Adam's coming downstairs. Okay. Was that Tessa? Were you listening in on the bedroom phone? I wouldn't do a thing like that. That's what Tessa said. So it was, Tessa. Well, yes, it was. Did she say anything about coming back? No. She's with a man, Maida. No, she's not. I saw her. You couldn't have seen her. You don't even know where she is. In my mind, I saw her with a man. Well, your mind is mistaken. It never is. Maida, I need her back. I go into to rehearsal next week. She knows that. Maybe she's forgotten. No, she hasn't. Did she say something about it on the phone? No, but I did. You do realize how important it is to have her back with me before rehearsals start, don't you, Maida? I suppose I do. It's vital, vital. Well, maybe. Maida. Maida, do, do you feel well? Me? I feel fine. You don't look well. You... <laughs> You look as though you're coming down with something. Well, I'm not. Uh, it must be this terrible weather we're having. I don't mind it. Drafty old house. This is a nice house. I, li- I like... I like... God bless you. I've always liked this house. You're catching a cold. I'm not. Adam, what are you trying to do? Don't you see? If, if you were to get sick, not seriously sick, just a little sick... Tessa would come back, please, Maida. You want me to catch a cold just to bring Tessa back to you? If only you would, please, Maida. Don't, don't you? Well, I won't. See? It's gone already. I'm fine. Adam. Did you... Did you give me that cold? I mean, did you, you know, wish it on me? I was thinking how nice it would be. Just a little cold made her nothing serious. Just a sniffle or two. Is that you, Adam? Yep. Run upstairs, Jonathan. Get ready for dinner. Oh, go on playing, mate. It sounded beautiful. I've been playing all afternoon. I'm tired. 
Where have you been? Oh, Jonathan and I were playing. Playing what? Well, we tobogganed for a while. Looks to me like he did a little skiing. Well, I went down a couple of slopes. Not Jonathan, though. <laughs> he doesn't know how to ski. You didn't offer to teach him, I hope. He doesn't even own a pair of skis. And he's not going to for a while yet. Well, I sort of promised him. You're that... not to promise him any such thing. Maybe he's going to want them. He's never wanted them before. Adam, did you try to talk him into learning how to ski? Did you? He is old enough. Did you let him use your skis? No. If you did... I just let him stand on my feet while I was... You didn't. He was perfectly safe. I held on to him. What if you'd fallen? Jonathan could have broken an arm or a leg. He could have been killed. Oh, not killed, mate. I'm a good skier. Oh, just a broken bone or two. Is that your idea? At his age, it wouldn't have been serious. And a cold at my age wouldn't be serious either. Well, no. But either one would serve to bring Tessa home. Is that it? Made a rehearsal start next week. You're impossible. Absolutely impossible. Well, what have I done? I haven't done anything. Did you tell Jonathan to take a hot bath when you brought him home? Is he supposed to take a hot bath? Jonathan! Jonathan, you're to take off those wet clothes and get into a hot bath. You hear? I didn't do anything! Hello? Tessa, I had to call you. Yes, Mother. I don't know if I should tell you this, but your fool husband has some sort of idea that if I got sick, you'd come home. Are you sick? No, no, I'm not sick. Adam tried to give me a cold, but I caught on right away and put a stop to it. Well, Mother, if you're sick, I'll... I'm not sick. I'm not sick. Now, if you just listen, Adam thinks that if I got a little cold or something, or if Jonathan were to break an arm or a leg, you'd come home. Well, I would. That's why I'm calling you. I'm not sick. And Jonathan is perfectly fine, and we're both going to stay that way. So you're not to worry, you hear me? Not to worry. Oh, I hear him coming downstairs now, so I'll hang up. Goodbye. Bye, Mother. Oh, for goodness sake. Your mother, huh? Yes. No trouble, I hope. Well, she just called up to tell me everything's fine. Oh. That was very nice of her. Well, yes, it was. You look worried. You want to tell me about it? I know we only met last night, but I I feel I've known you for years. It's my husband. He, he goes into rehearsal next week, and he's always a little, well, difficult just before he goes into rehearsal. He... He's a marvelous actor. Yes, he is. I remember him in that play about Napoleon. The Man from Corsica. Yes, I saw it twice. Then he made the movie. I saw that three times. And all his other plays and all his pictures. Oh, my, what an actor. Yes, what an actor. It must be fascinating to live with a man like that. Fascinating? Well, what a personality. Wow. Yes, wow. Makes me wonder how you can stand spending time with somebody like me. I mean, what's the percentage? Oh, Philip, you're a very nice man. Very, very nice. Oh, yes, perhaps, but... Uh... Next to your husband. Why do you have to say next to my husband? Next to anybody? Why can't you be all by yourself? You're good enough. Oh, I don't know if I'd go that far. I would, any time. Speaking of next to your husband, you know, I was there last night. What? You were there? Yes, standing right next to him. <laughs> In my dream. I had a dream about him. Of course, I recognized him right away from his movies and all, but I must say I never thought I'd meet him, not even in a dream. What happened in the dream? Did he give you his autograph or what? No, no, nothing like that. Not much of anything happened. I was right here in this room, or maybe it was in my own room. These motel rooms all look alike, and I turned around, and there he was. Oh, I was so impressed. Even in my sleep, I was so impressed, I couldn't get my mouth open to say anything. I just looked at him. And he looked back at me and... Oh, boy. Did he look sad. Sad? Yes. Sort of shook his head like he couldn't stand it. or He, he was sorry for me or something. He was so sad. Philip, then what happened? I woke up. Huh. Crazy kind of a dream to have, wasn't it? I, I must be nuts. You think so? Not you, Philip. Not you. No, not you. Where 
bring your coffee into the living room, Adam. There's a fire going. Terrible weather. Absolutely terrible. You feeling all right, Neda? I feel fine, so don't start that again. I just asked. Jonathan is fine, too. That's good. Here's your coffee. What ever gave you the idea you could make either one of us sick? Just by thinking of it. Oh, not really sick. Just a little... Just enough so Tessa would come back. Yes. How did you figure she would know? Oh, she'd know. We don't all have your psychic gifts, Adam. Yes, you do. Only you don't use them. Oh, Adam. Tessa would have known. There's a good deal of telepathy between Tessa and me. I... I'd know if she was sick. That doesn't mean it works both ways. It must work both ways. It must. Don't count on it. Mate, if I could only convince you. There's a huge reservoir feeling in us all. And that feeling is full of power and resources. Cleverness, inspiration. Every man and woman alive possesses it. Not just geniuses and mystics and philosophers. Everyone has it. The meanest of us. But most of us won't use it. We let it lie dormant while we coast down the slide of our humdrum days toward the grave. You may have it, Adam. You are, after all, a very great actor. I don't act by myself. I don't act for myself. I act in front of people, for people, and they react. Something profound in me is rousing something profound in them. The thing that the thing that's in me is calling to the same thing in them. <laughs> oh, what's the use? You don't want to understand. It's all so futile and so tiring. Adam, I may as well tell you I phoned Tessa and told her. Told her what? Your little plot to make me come down with something, or Jonathan. I felt she should know. That's all right, you thought you were doing the right thing. I'm glad you're not angry. Doesn't make any difference. It's perfectly clear my powers are failing anyway. If they weren't, you'd have got sick or Jonathan would have had a little accident and Tessa would have come home no matter what you did or didn't do. You mean you're beginning to lose faith in yourself? I guess I am. You don't think any more that you can fly? Tessa would only come home. Well, she won't. She'll never, never, never come home, and I'm lost. Adam, what's the matter? I don't feel well. What is it? I don't feel at all well. Adam, why, you have a fever. Your head is hot. I'm sick. I'm burning up. I'm going to call the doctor. No, no. Made her come back here. I don't want a doctor. But you need... I don't one. need anything. I'm sick. I have a fever. I, I think it's a very high fever. Yes. Yes, I am sick. I'm very sick. And now my wife will come home. We all know there are people who will do anything to get what they want. They'll lie. They'll cheat. They'll steal. They'll even murder. And if everything else fails... They'll get sick. Such a one is Adam Farr, the great actor who is now not acting. Not with a fever of 105, he isn't. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. After unsuccessful attempts to confer telepathically a small ailment on his mother-in-law and a minor injury on his stepson in order to bring his wife home, Adam Farr, actor extraordinary, has now come down with a raging fever, which, we assume, he conferred upon himself. Where there's a will, there's a way. And Adam Farr has a very powerful will. Do try to lie still, Adam. I want to change the compresses. Rehearsals. Next week, 
rehearsals. I start rehearsals. If you don't let me take care of you, there won't be any rehearsals. So please lie still. Tessa, Tessa, I need you. Tessa, come home to me. Tessa. I, I'm dying. Adam, let me call a doctor. Not yet. Not yet. Not, not till Tessa comes home. I'm going to get some more ice, Adam. Will you be all right? I'll be all right when my wife comes back to me. I'll, I'll fly to meet her. You'll do no flying of any kind. You're weak as a kitten. Now lie there quietly if you can while I get more ice for the compressors. <laughs> Made it. Don't, don't leave me. I'll be right back. I think she's coming home. Tessa, are you coming home? Yes, Yes, you are on the way. You are driving along the road to our house. Oh, drive carefully, my precious. A little faster. But carefully, my love, carefully, yes. Yes, that's it. The turn is up ahead. You haven't forgotten it, have you? That's it now. Up the driveway between the, the rows of fir trees that we planted ourselves. Slow down for that last curve. Now, stop. You are here. I knew you'd come. Oh, I knew it, my love. I... I'll fly to meet you. This is the moment for me to fly. Wait, wait, wait for me, my love. Out of bed? Over to the window, wait. Lord, how weak I am, but it won't be easy to fly. Float through the window, straight down to you. You're getting out of the car now. Yes. The window's closed. Wait, my darling, I've, I've only got to open it. Why does it Oh! And I've... Locked? No, no, no. There it is. I think I've got it. A little more, and I fly out the window and down to you. A little bit more. Oh, Tess. Tess, I, I couldn't quite manage it. I had the eye. Adam, you got out of bed. Are you all right? Yes, all right. Whatever possessed you? Answer the door, Maida. Let me help you up. Leave me here and go answer the door. What? There is someone at the door. No, there is not. Tessa. Tessa's at the door. Go let her in. Tess, it was uncanny. There's no other word for it. I'd gone to get some ice from the kitchen. I suppose that's why I didn't hear the car drive up. When I went back, he was lying on the floor by the window. It was open a few inches. He must have opened it. Heaven knows what he was trying to do. Whatever it was, the effort was too much for him, and he collapsed. I tried to get him back into bed, but he said never mind to answer the door. I thought, well, now he's really delirious because there wasn't a sound. He said there's someone at the door. I said, no, there's no one. He said Tessa's come home. And then... We heard the door knocker. Oh, Mother. We both know by now Adam's a very strange man. You know I told you on the phone he wanted me to develop a cold or Jonathan to have a little accident just to bring you home. Well, it never occurred to me he'd make himself sick, but he did. And look, it brought you home. I suppose we should go up and see how he is. Yes, we should. I left him lying on the floor. He seemed perfectly lucid and very calm. I was the one who was frantic when I heard the knock at the door. Now you've got some idea what it's like living with a man like Adam. Yes, yes, I have. Well, he got himself back in bed anyway. That's good. Adam? He's sleeping. It's the first time he's slept since he took sick. Adam? Adam? It's Tessa. I'm here. Adam? What's the matter with him? It's like the other times. You mean... His astral body has... has gone someplace else. Gone? 
Where? Heaven only knows. Here's tea for both of us, dear. Lord knows we need it. Thank you, Mother. It's all so strange, isn't it? Very strange. Not just this. Not just his leaving his body this way, but the whole thing. How he made you come back and everything. Tess, tell me. How did he get the message to you? How did the telepathy work? It didn't. What do you mean, it didn't? You're here. I'm not here because of Adam, Mother. You're not? I'm not here because he's sick. I had no idea there was anything wrong with him. But you... You're here... Why did I you... came back to tell him that the separation's final. Permanent. Mother, I've met a man, a, a very nice man. He'll be here pretty soon. You, you'll meet him. I, I hope you like him. Well, of course, if He's you... a very ordinary man. There's nothing unusual about Philip. He, he's like a hundred million other men. You love him? I think I do. Of course, I, I've only known him a short time... He was staying at the motel. We were almost the only people there. We spent a lot of time together. And, oh, Mother, it was so restful, so peaceful. Well, darling, of course I don't want to influence you, but, but do you know how much Adam loves you? I suppose. All the time you've been away, he's talked of nothing but you. You know he goes into rehearsal next week. I know, I know. He says he can't do it without you. He'll have to. Tessa... When I went in to check on him, he looked so different, so quiet and content. I'm sure that must be because you came home. I know he thought he'd brought you home, but even so... Mother, I can't be concerned anymore with what Adam thinks. Tessa, when I went back into the bedroom with the ice cubes and found Adam on the floor, he was right in front of the window, and his fingers were bleeding... And the window was open a couple of inches. Mother, Tessa, I think he was trying to fly. You don't? Yes, I do. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I've made fun of him about this notion he could fly. I've made fun of him about a lot of things. Your ordinary man would have been resentful or angry or embarrassed. But not Adam. He was very sweet. Very humble. Humble? Adam Humble? My dear, he doesn't claim extraordinary powers for himself. He says we all have them. Well, I don't have them. <coughs> oh, that must be Philip. Now, be nice to him, Mother. Well, of course. Come in, Philip. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Philip, this is my mother. Uh, mother, uh, how do you do? My uh, daughter's been telling me about you. Hello, hello. Uh, will you have some tea, Philip? No, no, thank you. Uh... Uh, Tessa... Well, come sit down, anyway. Uh, Tessa, I've got to tell you something. Uh, would you like me to leave? I'll go upstairs and check on Adam. Well, is he here? Of course he's here. He's been sick, Philip. But I just saw him. He, you couldn't have. Well, yes, he, he didn't look sick. He looked very well. Where do you think you saw him? On the road. Just outside the house. He was... He was standing in the middle of the road. Well, that's impossible, Philip. He's been upstairs in bed since last night. No, he was standing in the middle of the road, I tell you, waving his arm. Philip, you imagined it. Remember, you, you had a dream about him one night back at the motel? No, no, look, this wasn't any dream. I was driving along looking for the house, and there he was right in the middle of the road. No, Philip. I talked to him. And just what did he say? He said... He said that if I took his wife away from him... He'd kill me. Oh, Philip. But you must understand, Philip, that wasn't the real Adam Farr who said that. Well, then who was it? It was... It was the astral Adam Farr. Uh, I don't understand. What? What's that, his stand-in? Well, something like that. Tessa, I don't want you to think he scared me or anything like that. I mean, it was sort of sudden and it was spooky, but I still want you to come away with me. I mean... I'll take my chances, if you will. Tessa? Will you? Will you, Tessa? I don't know. We can go a long ways away from here. Well, let me think about it. All right. If you want to. Go back to the motel. I'll, I'll call you in a day or two. 
All right, all right, I'll be there. And whatever you decide, I know you'll decide the right thing. I hope so. I'll be right by the phone. I'll have my meal sent in. Call me any time of the day or night. I'll show you to the door, Philip. Tessa, remember. I love you. I'll remember. I'll be waiting for your call. She'll call you. Wait, Philip. Wait. He's gone. Call him back. I'm going with him. You're sure? Yes, I'm sure. I'm going to get my coat. Tell him to wait for me. If you're sure. Philip. Look, look there. Oh, no. It's Adam and, and Philip. They're, they're not moving, either of them. Well, what happened? Adam jumped from the bedroom window. Philip was standing right beneath it. He killed him. Just as he said he would. Either that or he was trying to fly. And... Well, I'll call the police. Well, wait. Do you see it? See what? That mist rising from their bodies. Thin, bluish, a, a sort of vapor floating toward the sky. See? There it goes. There it goes. A spirit of the same size and shape as the physical body, which can detach itself and move about in space and time. In the last moment of life, it detaches itself in the form of a thin bluish vapor and moves upward. That is how Adam Farr would describe the astral self. And for all I know, he's perfectly right. Anyway, it's pleasant to think so. I'll be back shortly. Perhaps you didn't believe a word of our story. I wouldn't blame you. I'm not 100% positive I believe it myself. On the other hand, I'm not 100% positive I didn't believe it either. We are, after all, dealing here with the human soul. And when it comes to the human soul, I'm ready to believe anything. Or, on the other hand, nothing. Our cast included Michael Wager, Jennifer Harmon, Jacqueline Brooks, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>